And good evening, everybody. Welcome to Friday. We made it. I'm Ken. You're watching Ken in the Kitchen, and this is the show where I am attempting to teach myself how to cook, uh, while at the same time trying to teach myself how to live stream, which has been interesting, let's just say. Uh, all the dishes that I cook on the show, I'm cooking for the very first time in front of you. So yeah, let's see what, uh, what will happen. Uh, if you're new, to the uh, the program, I can see your comments in my uh, chat window here. So um, just you know, if you're out there watching, say hi. <clears throat> Excuse me, say hi, um, and let me know where in the world you may be watching from, because that's uh, a lot of the fun of this is just being able to to talk with people in real time from all over the place, which is kind of cool. Sorry for the steam, as you might be able to guess, I have some water boiling right now for tonight's dish. So what is tonight's dish? Tonight's dish is uh, shrimp puttanesca, which is a fancy way, I guess, of saying shrimp for, oh, it's the tactful way to put this, ladies of the evening. Yeah. They name dishes strangely sometimes, don't they? Um, so let's take a look here. What do I got to work with? Um, we have, obviously, shrimp. And then amongst our other ingredients, let's see here. We've got some flat leaf parsley. We've got lemons. We have tomatoes. Um, I mean, there's a, I've got some Parmesan, although you can't really tell what this is because it's in a bag, but this is Parmesan. Uh, the recipe also calls for some uh, olives, probably not the ones stuffed with pimento, but that's, uh, that's kind of what I'm going with anyway. Uh, of course, the tomatoes, we're going to both be using the zest of the lemon as well as the, uh, the juice of the lemon. And the recipe also calls for anchovies, which I love. I I found out I found out rather late in life that I liked anchovies. So, uh, yeah, good stuff. Pretty excited about that. Uh, so let's take a look here. I guess one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drop in my pasta. Uh, we're going to do this with linguine. And you know, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what brand of linguine you use as long as you don't drop it on the floor. So let's go ahead and take lid off says 12 ounces of linguine, but, you know, who doesn't like extra pasta? It's not like you can't do anything with the noodles that you don't use for your particular recipe, right? I guess what I should do is grab my timer real quick so I can make sure I uh, do this correctly. All right, so let's go ahead and just pour in. Ah. Yeah, I'm already making a mess. That's great. Okay. Um, so one of the problems, we don't have a lot of big stock pots. I've got this lodge pot, but I don't really use the lodge pot for boiling pasta too much. Uh, I don't know why. It's kind of dumb. Why am I not using the lodge pot to boil my pasta? I don't know. You'll find I do a lot of weird, questionable things on this show. Because, yeah, I'm just still learning what I'm doing. I've only been cooking for about two months. Uh, and I enjoy it. It's fun. But uh, I'm definitely not used to it yet. And I'm still getting used to doing the streaming, too. If you have 
any suggestions for uh, dishes that you'd like to cook for your Friday night dinner, let me know. Like I said, I can't see the comments, so... I guess it helps if you uh, start the timer after you put the pasta in. That's the, the challenge of not only teaching yourself how to cook, but doing the live streaming at the same time, because I'm running all the cameras as well as trying to concentrate on uh, doing this properly. All right, so let's let that go for a bit. I guess I can turn it down just a tiny bit so it doesn't bubble over. So now let's take a look. And I need to peel and vein my shrimp. So let's go ahead. We'll move this out of the way for now. parsley at this exact moment in time. So, okay. Now it calls for 12 ounces of shrimp. I don't know that I exactly have 12 ounces here, but I think it's probably close, you know. All right, so let's go ahead and I guess I can just start peeling these. Now these, the, the brand I bought, are uh, already deveined, so all you have to do is, uh, is peel them and pull the tails off, because really, who wants, who wants tails? I don't want tails. I know people like shrimp tails for making things like stock, I, and I get that. It's, they're extremely flavorful, but uh, But for just regular, you know, eating out of hand, not uh, not my preferred part of the shrimp at all. And I've done shrimp one other time on the show. I know I promise that the recipes I do are for the very first time, but that is the first time I've actually done uh, shrimp puttanesca. So the other shrimp dish I did was a little different, but as I said in that uh, live stream. I've watched enough cooking shows to know that you don't have to get fresh seafood. If you're getting it frozen from a reputable uh, vendor, then chances are it was probably frozen right after it was caught, and it's, it's going to be pretty good, even for frozen shrimp. Frozen sh I can talk. Frozen shrimp. So glad it's Friday. And again, I love the smell of shrimp. Because it uh, takes me back to when I was a kid and uh, my dad used to uh, get to travel occasionally to go watch football games in San Francisco. And, ah. Uh, I remember the smell of the ocean, and I remember being on the pier. It just, it's a very nostalgic thing for me when I smell seafood. This isn't going too bad so far. Not taking overly long doing this. I really miss, since the, you know, the pandemic, I really miss going out to uh, have sushi. Sushi is my favorite. Absolutely love me some sushi. And Karina really likes the rolls. I like some of the rolls, too, to be honest. But uh, my favorite is just nigiri. I can just eat plate after plate full of nigiri. Love yellowtail, love you know maguro tuna. I love um, salmon, sake. I think they call it. And I like sake, the drink, as well. Good stuff. All 
All right, this all seems to be going very smoothly. I'm just discarding the shells and the tails into this orange bowl here. The other thing I love about pasta dishes is that uh, it's so easy to uh, to use any extra pasta that you might have for something else entirely, which is always a good thing. Okay, and that's the last of that. So shrimp are all peeled and uh, just peeled because you no know, need to devein them. So I'm go ahead and wash my shrimpy hands real quick. And then I think I will check on the pasta. I mean, usually it takes about uh, 10 minutes or so, so I don't think it's near ready yet, but uh, let's take a look here. Can at least stir it so it's not you know, sticking together. Oh yeah, it's got a ways to go, I think. So we're okay on that, so I can go back to the uh, prep counter and play with my veggies, I think now is the next step that I'm gonna wanna do. Uh, the, the recipe, by the way, I got from Woman's Day website, and I, I'll put the link in the description down below for you. So let's see here, linguine, so I guess I can do the lemon zest. I need two teaspoons of lemon zest. Not sure exactly the best way to do this. But one thing I do know I should do is rinse off this uh, lemon real quick. I guess I should just bring the uh, towel with me to keep drying my hands and, and other things too. Uh, so, okay, lemon zest. Stir the noodles again. So I guess I'll just go ahead and <laughs> Good job, Ken. Great of the label, you jackhole. Okay. Um, yeah. As you can tell, I'm not that good at this. <laughs> um, trying to get most of the zest on the uh, on the plate here. Zesting. I don't know why I'm doing this right-handed. I'm left-handed. You see, when I try to do more than a couple of things at once, my brain just disengages. And it's sad. It's very sad. Ah. Oh. Fresh lemons. Citrus. Citrus and seafood. If I wanted to do one of those, like, Mediterranean diets or something, probably would be able to do it fairly easily because I love citrus and seafood. And... <laughs> Trisha says that the noodles boiling make it sound like I'm on a train. That's funny. I like that though. That's awesome. Hi Trisha, how are you? It's good to see you. I haven't seen you online in a while. Glad you were Still around, doing stuff. Man, this is a mess. Okay. <laughs> Try to get it out of the microplane and it's asking for two teaspoons. So, let's 
see how much I managed to get here. So that's one teaspoon. I'm gonna put it in here. Whoops. And you know what that means, boys and girls. It means I need to check my pasta. So let's take a look here. I am glad you were good. I like your new profile picture. Looks nice. All right, so let's see here. So that was about 10 minutes. Hot pasta is hot. Maybe do another 30 seconds to a minute and I think it'll be perfect. I think it'll work very well. I'm excited. Mm. I could just eat plain pasta with butter and salt and garlic powder. Um, okay, back to here. Let's see if I... Uh, All right, so that's one. I'm definitely gonna need to zest this second lemon. Wash that off real quick. Sorry, I, I don't have a sink cam yet. Which would actually be a really weird thing to have, wouldn't it? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the pasta off here. Take it over here and just uh, give it a quick drain. So Trisha, what have you been up to? Are you cooking anything fun lately or anything new and exciting growing in your garden? I know you have that really nice garden. All right, so now take pasta off heat. All right, now I'm finally gonna get to the rest of the lemon zest. Once again, it smells wonderful. This is going a little bit better this time. It's amazing how much... I guess you don't need a lot of zest, right? At least uh, that's another thing I've heard of on cooking shows is that uh, the reason you use zest is because it's just, just packed full of flavor and you don't need to use tons of it necessarily. I don't know. I'm a newbie, so I can only go by what I see on TV. Next Iron Chef and that kind of thing. Okay. Let's try, let's see if we got enough this time around here. Oh yeah, I'll call that good. That's two teaspoons of zest. Harvested almonds. Yeah, that's exciting. I've never harvested an almond. That sounds interesting to me, actually. All right, so lemon zest. And now we've got to get a quarter cup of lemon juice. Okay. I can do this. Where's my measuring cup? Did I actually leave it in the dishwasher? I probably did. I probably did. That's okay. All right. Good stuff. Now I need a knife so I can cut my lemon in twain. Half a cup? Quarter cup. Whew. Okay. 
might actually get that out of two lemons. I don't know though, I've never uh, juiced lemons. So here we go. And I know I've seen Alton Brown and some of the other people like, they put a fork in it, don't they? I think I've seen that before, where you squeeze it around a, a fork to get more juice out of it. Does this look like it's working to you? I don't know. Ah, it's a lot of juice. Okay, well, it feels like a lot of juice. So I need quarter cup. Is that a quarter cup? Uh, not quite. All right, use the other half of the lemon. I'm trying to squeeze carefully so I don't get any seeds in there. Seeds. Oh, see, and I did it anyway. Look at that. Right in there. Dumb can. Okay. Do the fork trick again. Okay, I think this is going to be pretty close here. You know, it's just shy of a quarter cup. I think it'll be okay. I think it's close enough. It's cooking, not baking. So, you know, I don't have to be exact exact. Which I've come to appreciate a little bit more. I still think I prefer baking because there's no mystery to me in baking. Oh, dumb Ken. I guess I can keep the lid on the, the pasta so that it doesn't uh, cool down too fast. And there we go. All right, now I think I'm gonna end up doing something with shrimp here pretty quick. Um, So I'm supposed to toss the pasta with the lemon zest and the juice. Okay, so let's do that. We'll come back over here. Move this back here and let's go ahead. We'll add the lemon juice and the lemon zest. And you're supposed to just still a little hot to be doing that by hand. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Okay. I'm supposed to just toss that around. I have a feeling I might uh, be using uh, even more fresh squeezed lemon juice on top of this after it's done. Okay, so I've got that. Okay, Ken should learn to read recipes a little closer because <laughs> I just realized I'm not going to need my frying pan because I'm not actually frying the shrimp. Um, I'm broiling, broiling them. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. Okay, so let's come back over here. And uh, we'll prep the rest of the ingredients that are going to go on the roasting, the broiling pan. So I need my tomatoes, the shrimp, and the anchovies. Okay, so tomatoes. And again, you know, just use whatever tomatoes you, you like. I, uh, I kind of like these because they're just tiny and they're, you know, it doesn't require a lot of weird 
You don't have to do a lot to them, you just rinse them off. And... Put those on there, and it says you don't have to halve the uh, tomatoes unless uh, they're really big. And these aren't, these are not big at all, as you can see, so just give them a quick rinse and just kind of dry them off a little bit with a paper towel. I guess I can, that's a lot of pasta, maybe I should use some more tomato, what do you think? You think that'll work? I think, uh, I think a little more tomato will be okay. Now I have to rinse these. Sorry, I'm a bit out of practice <clears throat> doing this on camera because I haven't done a stream all week. It's just been a weird, weird week. Just looking for, looking for work and talk to my shrink today for a little bit. Did some discussion about altering my medication if uh, things get too dark. So we'll see what happens there. All right. Um, two anchovies finely chopped. All right, excited for this. Love anchovy. You don't have to use anchovy, but I, I think you're going to be missing out if you don't. I think it's worth the time to use anchovies. Just uh, gonna drain these because they're full of oil and you don't want to don't want the oil to mask all the flavor of the fish. Okay. So now, calls for two of them, it says. So I'll just take two out. Hey, little fishies. And we're supposed to chop them up pretty fine. So prepared to be completely underwhelmed by my lack of knife skills. And probably don't need a lot of anchovy. I think two is probably the correct number for this because uh, cause they're salty. I mean, they're salty, briny fish. And although I do like them, I'm going to have one. Mm. <laughs> yeah, good, good stuff. Oh, very salty though. Okay. Two of those. Um, so we're gonna have the tomatoes, the shrimp, and the anchovies on the baking sheet with one tablespoon of oil. So I think what I'll do is I will wipe up the water I spilled on the floor. Uh, let me go ahead and set the oven to broil. Let me move the rack to the top. And then I'm going to line the uh, baking sheet with foil. And then I will be able to uh, put the oil, put the oil on the foil, and uh, yeah, do all that stuff. Probably wouldn't hurt to get some more foil soon. Glad I'm uh, not attempting to do this while drinking. 
I've seen some uh, shows on YouTube like that. <laughs> and I think the only reason that works at all is because those people um, have had a lot of experience cooking and so they can, they can make these recipes drunk. Whereas I, uh, no, not so much. Okay, olive oil. I always forget where I put the olive oil. And I think it's over here now. Yep. Okay, and it just calls for a tablespoon. I <laughs> Who am I kidding? I'm Italian. I can't resist pasta. No, I don't blame you. I'm Irish, and I can't resist pasta. So, I, you know, I feel your pain. All right. Um, let's see. Did I really grab all of my measuring spoons except for except for my tablespoon? I might have. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess I'll just eyeball it. Isn't that what they all say to do anyway? So I'll just uh, put what I think is a tablespoon. Just kind of, I guess, smear it around there. <laughs> I don't know. This, I don't know, that, that looks okay, I think. Let's see. So Kat from New York City. Fantastic. How is New York? Tell me what what is New York like right now? I have never been to New York. Uh, Karina and I really want to go someday. We ideally would go just after New Year's so we could go to a lot of the places that will still have Christmas decorations up at that time and kind of still see the city as if it's you know, Christmas time without actually being there for Christmas when it's probably just a madhouse and really expensive to stay anywhere, I'm guessing. But yeah, I, oh, we would love to go there. Okay. Um, now, let's uh, go back over to the prep counter here. And I guess I will, uh, I can put... The shrimp, the little bitty tomatoes. I guess you just kind of, doesn't really say how to place them on there. And again, you're not supposed to have to uh, cut the, uh, cut the tomatoes up because they're not huge tomatoes. Just start putting the uh, shrimp on here. You can't see anything I'm doing because I'm bad at my job. Here we go. Just kind of move this aside and stick my hairy arm into the camera lens. Because everyone wants to see that. All right, that's a little better anyway. Okay. Still smells amazing in here. Tell you what. So good. Love it. Shrimp. Now I'm going to have the Teen Titans Go Shrimp and Prime Rib song stuck in my head for the rest of the evening. Yep. And I did it to myself, so no one to blame except me. And then uh, last but not least, the uh, anchovy, I guess. Just <laughs> kind of toss it around. This is all very strange. It feels like there's not enough anchovy. Maybe there is. Let's see here. It's doing better, hopefully all better soon. God willing, not a whole lot open. It gets boring, but more family time and cooking videos, making recipes with the kids, get them learning. That's a great idea. I love your teddy bear. I love your teddy bear icon. That is wonderful, love it. Yes, he's cute. He reminds me of a, 
a teddy bear I saw on this Netflix show the other night uh, called The Repair Shop. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's British and uh, these craftsmen and craftswomen that they have working there are just amazingly talented. And there's these two ladies there that can do wonders with uh, old uh, put through the ringer stuffed animals. Such a, and, and I don't know, the face of your teddy bear just kind of reminded me of one of those from a, an episode I watched the other day. That was great. What kinds of uh, recipes do you teach your kids? What do they like, uh, what do they like to cook? Because I only started cooking about maybe three months ago now and I'm really kicking myself for not getting into it a lot sooner. Okay, now this says to transfer this to the broiler and to broil it for five or six minutes or until the tomatoes pop, which sounds violent and weird. It's my cousin's cat doll from when she's a baby. Okay, it's really old. Sorry, it's a cat doll. I thought it was a, a teddy bear. My bad. I got that wrong. Um, okay. So I'm going to put these in the oven for about five to six minutes or until these tomatoes burst, according to the uh, recipe. All kinds of desserts and pastas the most for the kids. Okay. That sounds good. I don't know why I switched cameras, because you can't see into the oven anyway. <laughs> I don't have an oven cam yet. I'm not, uh, not as sophisticated as Alton Brown on Good Eats. Um, I think, I thought I heard the uh, timer go off that the oven had uh, reached temperature under the broiler, but it hasn't yet, so I'm wrong. I'm not going to put that in just yet, and that's fine, because I have flat leaf parsley that I can uh, wash. I'll just move this. Move the shrimpy paper plate out of the way. And then I can just wash some parsley. It does take a lot of parsley, I would imagine. might have said that it was pre-washed, but uh, why take the chance, right? So we'll just kind of dry that off a little bit. <laughs> I'm a menace in the kitchen. Don't know who let me in here. What were they thinking? Okay, uh, so I'll get a bigger knife. And make a mess, okay. Prepare to be amazed. No, actually don't, because you're not going to be, because my knife skills are awful. They're non-existent. It's not even that they're awful, they're just bad. Don't need all of these stems, I don't think, right? This whole thing is a stem. This is just one long stem. What the heck is this? I don't know. Uh, here we go. We like parsley. We don't like basil. Basil. I can take or leave basil. Basil, uh, basil if paired with oregano, is good. Um, but basil by itself, not a huge fan of it. Not a huge fan of fennel either. Am I making everybody out there nervous because I don't know how to slice things? 
should be because I'm making myself nervous because I don't know how to slice things. Karina would just be laughing her butt off right now. She would just be shaking her head in amusement at my really bad attempt to chop veg. Oh. You should have your kids watch this show so they can feel better about themselves because I am sure they are much better in the kitchen than I am. Absolutely. I, uh, I have no doubt about it, actually. I'm sure they are much better than me. Ah, all right, so there's that. Kind of surprised it's taking so long for the uh ah oh. I'm a dummy. You can't just turn the oven to broil. You have to turn the temperature dial all the way up to broil too. Sorry about that. This is taking a little bit longer than I expected because I keep forgetting to do things. <laughs> That's okay. Still smells good in here. Okay, and then we're going to be garnishing with the parsley and with the uh, olives so I can chop those up too. Not good cutters either. <laughs> I, I'm going to, I'm going to say that I'm pretty sure that they're better than I, uh, they are better than I am. Like I said, I, I'm regretting that I didn't get started cooking a lot earlier. Okay, so now I'll go ahead, I'll set the uh, parsley aside here. And then I'll chop up the uh, green onions, make a mess, because that's what you do. Can you imagine? Oh, Gordon Ramsay would be having a fit right now, right? Because of my, uh... Because of my, uh... My station is so messy. It's so messy. Okay, what was I doing? Olives. Ah, uh, let's see. Let me get a uh, spoon. Spoon to rescue the olives with. I like olives a lot. And you're just supposed to chop them up. I'm leaving the pimento in. I think this recipe calls for green olives that have been pitted. I actually couldn't find green olives that had pits in them. All I could find at the store were, you know, the ones that we all know with the red pimento in them. So that's what I got. And you got to be able to adapt. And the other thing that the recipe uh, calls for is a red chili pepper. I looked. I could not find a red chili pepper anywhere. I went to Save Mart. I went to Walmart. I did not go to, I bet I could have found one at Whole Foods, couldn't I? I bet I could have if I had tried to look there. I don't know why I didn't think about doing that. I was probably, uh, probably just needed to get home for some reason. That's okay. All right. Olives are... I would call that a rough chop, I think. <laughs> it's rough, Ken. Yeah, it's, it's a rough chop. Okay. Oh, that one didn't get chopped. Oh, darn. Oh, no. Okay. Mm. And uh, because I'm weird, I'll go ahead and follow that with another anchovy. Mmm. Anchovies are delicious, people. You're missing out if you don't embrace the anchovy. Okay. A 
olives, parsley, parmesan. Okay. All right, I think that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the uh, oven now to broil and we'll set the timer for uh, five minutes. and see how it goes. Fingers crossed, okay. Uh, as I said earlier, I will put the uh, original recipe down in the description below so that you can see it. And uh, if you end up trying it, I'd really be interested to see what your results were. So um, all my social media links and everything are down below. Tag me uh, for any pictures that you put up because I would love to see. I always, it's, it's fun to see what other people do. What am I looking for? I'm looking for this so I can stir my pasta a little bit, which is still warm. I'm trying to keep it from being one huge, gigantic, sticky mess. And, uh, I uh, just realized I left out another component of this. <laughs> I forgot to reserve pasta water. Gosh, I'm an idiot. Do you think using black or kalamata? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I don't see why not. Any kind of olives would work. I would, oh, kalamata olives. Mmm. I love kalamata olives. They are good. They are good. I like Kalamata. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea, actually. Okay, so... I don't know why I'm expecting anything to have happened. It's been a whopping two minutes, Ken. Uh, okay. Up there. I guess I can put away this pan that I ended up not needing. Which, you know, that's good. One less dish to wash. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and I guess I could grate the uh, Parmesan cheese because that's the last thing that goes on top of this. And that's uh, Parmesan. So I can go ahead and do that while we're waiting for the rest of this. Messy, messy station. Gordon Ramsay would yell at me. Who else would yell at me? I don't know that Alton Brown would yell at me. I think he would just shake his head in, in sadness and disappointment. Try to get this a little clean here and then I will grab the box grater and uh, we will get that Parmesan grated. And you're supposed to do the thin, thin side. Love, love cheese. This is why I have a problem with diets. Cheese. Cheese is the problem for Ken. It's the best food group. It really is. Cheese is just amazing. Oh. Cheddar. Oh, I used to... When I was a teenager, I could eat some cheddar cheese. I could eat so much cheddar. Ah, oh, make myself sick eating it. It's worth it, completely worth it, every time. This is a lot of cheese, but you know what? That's okay, because Karina loves cheese too.
Okay. That's a good amount of parm. I think that'll be, uh, I think that'll be good. I know Karina's probably going to ask me to grate more. And let's save the rinds. Ooh, I've heard that. I have actually heard of that, of uh, making, making infused soups with uh, cheese rinds. So <clears throat> that sounds good. Might have to try that. Probably not for a live stream. That would be really boring to watch somebody infuse soup with rind. I don't imagine that's exciting. This isn't exciting either, but it's a little more interesting than probably making soup. Okay, um, so that's good. What's the time looking like over here? It says 30 seconds left on the timer. Oh, well, it's definitely, ooh, okay. <laughs> Here we go. The shrimp is opaque and the tomatoes have kind of burst. I'm going to go another minute because let me turn, I'll actually just turn this around. Um, we like our shrimp cooked a little bit past what a lot of people like. Um, <clears throat> and it's mainly a texture issue. Oh, okay, what the heck am I going to do? Because I didn't reserve any of the cooking liquid. So this is going to be, this is going to be really weird. It's going to be a little sticky because the because uh, the pasta is now kind of sticky. Yeah, it is too good. It absolutely. What's your favorite cheese? Um, cheddar. I use you know, of course. Uh, love Asiago. Love Monterey Jack uh, and Pepper Jack. Oh, Pepper Jack. Whoever invented Pepper Jack uh, needs to be a holiday for that person absolutely needs to be a holiday for the person who invented Pepper Jack. That would be good. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think this is probably done. Haha. <laughs> oh, that looks, that actually looks not bad. Like brown too, not too soft. Yeah, exactly. I don't like I don't like my shrimp to be like mega chewy because that's ugh, that's bad. But that's not looking bad at all. That's some uh, some good caramelization there on uh, the tomatoes. They have definitely burst, and the shrimp are opaque, so I don't think I'm going to get sick on uh, undercooked shrimp. So, wow, okay, I guess now just need to transfer this stuff over to, um, we're supposed to put it back in the pot with the pasta, but I'm going to do this differently since I messed everything up. I will get a, a plate. And, uh, <clears throat> I will go ahead, let me I'll get a little bit of pasta. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I have to switch cameras. Little bit of, uh, of pasta here. Sticky, sticky pasta. 
man, I, I can't believe I didn't save any of the cooking water. Okay, so got that there. And, uh, okay, so now turn the oven off. Wander back. Why am I? <laughs> I don't need an oven mitt for this. I've got the plate here. Okay. So let's go ahead. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that, uh, Karina got that as a, uh, a, a white elephant Christmas gift at uh, when she was still working uh, at this company she worked at, and uh, it's pretty cool. The, the person did a really good job, actually, of shopping for her, because that's exactly the kind of thing that she uh, she likes. So we'll put a couple of these burst tomatoes on here. Not going to win any contests on Instagram with my plating, but, you know, that's, that's okay. Eh. The shrimp doesn't want to let go of the fork. Uh, let's see, and then uh, we can go ahead and put some of the uh, olives on there. And, uh, and of course, there's uh, anchovy in that mix, too. And a little bit of uh, parsley, not a whole lot, but you know, for color, as they say on TV, right? Uh, there's that. And then, last but certainly not least, we will go ahead and put just a little bit of uh, freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano. on the pasta. Oh boy. Let's uh, go ahead and zoom in here. How about that? That looks good to me. I don't know, what do you guys think? I am, I'm actually happy with that. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely call this uh, a win just as far as looks go. I don't, we still have to taste it though, so we'll see here. And I'm going to be a bad person, and I'm gonna cut my pasta with a knife while I'm tasting this to make it just a little bit easier because I've got the uh, shrimp on there too. <laughs> well, I'm going to taste it right now. I hope it does taste good, but let's uh, see what we got here. I want to get a bite that's got a little bit of everything on there if I can. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. There it is. That has, there is so much flavor in that. I am going to squeeze just a little bit more lemon. Because I like lemon a lot. I love lemon flavor. I love citrus. This would have been, I, I can honestly say this would have been a lot better if I had remembered to uh, reserve the, uh, the pasta water. And I'm just going to have to bring this up to my face here. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is good.
I would say between black olives and Kalamata, I would definitely go with Kalamata, but that's just my personal preference because I like tangy things. And black olives just don't do that for me. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. I, I should. I can, for the next batch that I eat with uh, Karina, I will definitely uh, put a little bit of olive oil on there to give it a little bit more flavor and make it a little looser, I think. Thank you. I'm glad you think it came out great. I am... I am excited. This is no. This is definitely going to go. And I've been putting together a binder of recipes uh, that I've tried on this show, uh, and that I've, I feel have come out pretty good. And this is definitely going to go in the binder. Mhm. Mm okay. This is good. I recommend it. Try it if you do. Tag me on social media with the picture of your results because I'd love to see it. Mm. Okay, that is so good. I'm so happy it, it actually worked. Um, just say it isn't cooking and then save it. And then when you drain it, yeah, that's what I should have done. Again, this is, <clears throat> I, um, this is the very first time I've cooked the, uh, the recipe and trying to do this while I'm doing the cameras and everything too. I tend to forget things if I don't uh, do it. Double the tomatoes, leave out the shrimp, and uh, and the anchovies. <laughs> yeah, I could. you could definitely use more tomatoes in there. It wouldn't hurt at all. Okay, so I think that's it for this episode. Thank you guys for being here with me. Kat, it was really good. Um, Patricia, it was great seeing you. I appreciate uh, appreciate seeing you again tonight. This was uh, this was so much fun. I had fun. Thank you guys. I love this. I'm gonna try to do this two nights a week, so Wednesdays and Fridays, uh, and I'm gonna start the show about 6:30 in the evening Pacific time. So just so you know, um, that's one to to look for it and do the thing as uh, as always. If you uh, if you're on YouTube, go ahead, like and subscribe, ring the bell for the notifications. If you're watching on Periscope or Facebook or wherever else, do whatever the stuff uh, tells you to do for that. And uh, and yeah, I think, uh, I think this is good. This is fun. All right, until I see you guys on Wednesday, 6.30 Pacific time. Um, thanks for being here. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Be safe. Wear your masks and uh, and just take care. Have a good rest of your weekend, and I will see you all soon. Oh, thank you so much, Cat. Uh, you tell your family hello, and uh, hope everybody has a great a uh, uh, great weekend and great evening there. All right, I'll see you guys next week. All right.